crikey. <laughs> it's more Diana. Right, next steps. Um, obviously, rocker covers back off again. Um, I've been over. I've made. Ha! Use my little template that I just put over the top of the distributor with the rotor in place. I do this. Just it's ever so easy to make these things. It's just it's, it's top of an old ice cream lid. I've marked the positions of the two clips. Odd shaped holes so I can get it over the top of the rotor. Line up the two clips, and then we know roughly the position that the rotor is pointing into. And I've put the Roman numerals on it because I can read upside down. Them. Um, and all I've done really is gone across, cranked it over to each of the positions and not noticed that any of these push rods is excessively loose, nor am I getting excessive movement, i.e. none, on the actual shaft themselves. So we're pointing at number eight at the moment. So if I go into number eight, I can feel very, very, very slight movement on that. None on that. Tiniest bit of movement on that. So now uh, I'm going to... Um, Put the ignition back together and start this thing up, run it without the rocket cover and just see if I can identify the noise at all uh, before I start digging into taking the inlet manifold out, which I'll be honest is a ball's ache. Before I get to that point, I'll probably end up giving it a quick uh, run up and down the motorway um, first and foremost, uh, really just to, to see if I can bed it in. And that'll be a pain in the ass if I'm going to take the, uh, the inlet out having got it all nice and seated in. I hate doing jobs twice, as you well know. Um, yeah, that, 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 th these are always useful. I just love it back in my uh, range of a box of useful bits to go for. Well, there's a weird thing. The tapping's gone away. And there is oil coming out of here, just in case you're worried. You can see the oil's coming through the shaft. Um, there isn't an enormous amount of oil that comes through these things anyway. You can certainly see it up here. Um, so yes, I'm quite happy that there is oil flow to the rockers. I'm wondering now, because obviously in order to see what's going on, I've taken the baffle plate out. I'm wondering if this baffle plate was causing my problem. That would be a bit awkward, wouldn't it, Richard? Or maybe it's just settled down overnight. It might rev, it might not. Confused.com. That's why it's always worthwhile diagnosing these problems before. Oh, doesn't that shut nicely? Oh, yes. That shuts nicely. That's a nice sound there as well. Listen, listen. When they shut nicely. Who needs a new Range Rover? Right, okay, so um, having done that, I think what I'll do next is I will put the baffle plate back on again. Now, the baffle plate is there because the rocket cover uh, vent is open to the world. There's no gauze over it at all. So if I was to just leave um, the, 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 the panel off, um, there might be a danger that I'm going to get crap coming up and into the... Um, getting sucked straight into the carbs. The baffle plate, all it really does, make sure I put it on the right way, fucking round, um, all it really does is kind of just stops the uh, the mist, I guess, or slows the mist down. So I'll put this on, and I'll double check that it's actually not touching. Is that the right way round, do we think? Or is that the right way round? I'll just double check the manual. I didn't actually notice which way it came off, but that's the way it should be. I 
I don't think it was stupidity on my part, but it could have been. I mean, it's non-billable time, but it just goes on that way around. Right, I'm going to put it back. Let me just get the battery. Um, pop him back in and see if that's fixed the problem, because that could be really stupid, Richard. Put that back on. Let's see what happens now. Come on, balance you. Can balance you up here, I think. You will balance up there. Look at that. Right now. That was a silly mistake to make, wasn't it, Richard? Very silly mistake. <coughs> Right, let's put it back together now. I learned something new today. <laughs> Dick. Um, oh, it's a good point, actually, because basically we're kind of faced with a problem which could conceivably have been a brand spanking new hydraulic tappet. Um, and it turned out to be, more or less, my basic stupidity. Wow. Everyone can make a mistake once, can't they? I won't make that mistake again. Right, we're all connected back up again. Battery on. Keys, which I've lobbed in here. Um... Probably just want to make sure the, uh, the fuel pump primes, first of all, grubby handprints all over this car. Um, are we out of gear? We're out of gear. Right. I can hear the fuel pump. Are we pissing fuel everywhere? Give it a second to fill the carbs up. Pissing out that. It's coming out of the overflow. And what the fuck? So it's doing it again. And that is going to be coming out of the overflow. So it's definitely float valve related. I'm going to have to get a couple of new float valves for this thing, brand spanking new ones. Oh! Bastard! You can see the amount of fuel then that was pouring out. I mean, that's what was happening earlier on. And now it'll all be dripping down onto the floor down here. Um, I don't want to run that for long. So, yeah, I couldn't see because the... Uh, um, what's his name was on earlier on, but you can see there is fuel around there. And it's all poured over the outside here. Let me just put the ignition back on. If I disconnect the battery, I can control the um, ignition with the battery. And I've got the uh... yeah coming out of the overflow. Definitely coming out of the overflow. Well, the carburetor overflowing is going to be something to do with the float valve, uh, the fuel pressure, or the float. Uh, or the float height. So I know that the float valve is not the issue because I've put two different float valves in there and the problem continued. And I know the float height isn't going to be the issue. So I'm thinking, well, what is it? So I've changed the float. I know it floated. I tried it in a bowl of water. It floated. Um, so I tried another float. Well, that made no difference either. It just overflowed over the top here. Um, so eventually I thought, well, do you know what? Let's start doing some diagnosis on this thing. I think there's a problem with this return pipe somewhere. I can blow down it, but basically I've got the ignition on at the moment, battery disconnected. If I connect the battery up, yeah, I can feel it filling. It's not going to overflow this time. I think the problem is actually with the... Uh, the overflow, uh, which will be my job for tomorrow. I'm not going to do it tonight uh, because it's a Saturday 
and the rugby's on in a minute and I want to go and watch that so I'm going to go and watch that um, but yeah nothing to do with the carbs in this particular case I am going to check the fuel pressure I'm not convinced that this uh, this fuel pump on this thing because I've never looked at the fuel pump on this car and bearing in mind the number of other kind of minor anomalies and issues we've got uh, with this thing I'm not entirely convinced um, that uh, that the fuel pump is correct for this application so really you want a, a fuel pump for a carretta solution should be putting out somewhere between four and five psi sometimes they put out six uh, and you have to regulate the supply or provide a return feed um i just don't know it's not the carbs though the symptom is the carbs but the actual root cause lies somewhere else um and it may well be that I end up replacing the fuel return line. We'll see. And the tick has gone away again. Um, so I think what we've got, we are right on the limit here of the tolerance on those 45 thou shims that I put in there. So I'm going to go back down to, um, it might even be the 30 thou shims. I'll measure whatever shim is in there and I'll put one um, shim tighter back in on this side. That side's fine. Um, fuel leak um, is down to the fuel return pipe. I'm ninety-nine point nine percent sure. It might not idle because it's cold. There we are, but no fuel leak. Um, I blew through this. Put kind of um, airline pressure down it um it is i'm just wondering if it's just maybe there or i don't know i'll do something with the fuel return i do want to measure the fuel pressure I'll start you up again I do want to measure the fuel pressure just a little bit of choke uh, because I think the fuel pump might be out of spec. I wanted to check that the um, temperature head is working. Rock steady, isn't it? Not a lot wrong with that. Oh no. So yeah, can't we just get a bad reputation for a fuel return line? How about that? Hold the front page. Um, I've lost the vacuum pipe here. There it is. Back in the advanced pipe is off. It should be drawing in a weak mixture through that hole there. We should improve it. There we go. Hear it already. Probably push the choke in now. There's always a reason why these things happen. Joke. I mean, it's cold today. So I'll change those tappets out. That's not really a problem. I wanted to warm it up though and uh, get some heat into the workshop. But I've got the doors open, don't worry, we're not going for carbon monoxide. I need to sort that fuel return out purely because I can't have an intermittent fault on the fuel return. Because the consequences are that the carburetor will overflow and pour down the back of the engine. Um, this is a cold. 
Oh, it's not too bad, eh? It's a damn good wash. I wanted this done last week. Rubbish pile. <laughs> this is all floor sweepings. This is all rubbish over in this corner, really. Well, not that, or that, or that, or that, but it's largely rubbish in this corner. Water temperature is starting to move. something wobbling somewhere. I think it's exhaust. There's a resonance on the exhaust. Yeah, temperature keeps working good. I just saw it on the exhaust manifold. Right, well, that tick stuff coming now, look at that. Oh look. I just found me one of these. Oh, that's nice. I wonder where that one went. There's one there, and there's one there. Weird, eh? <laughs> I've had that all apart as well, so God knows where that's come from. The Pixies. It's the Workshop Pixies. The ticks come in now. Now it's starting to warm up, the ticks come back. What's the temperature goes up? Oh, yes. Right. Pointless waiting fuel. We know that the temperature gauge is working. Jeez, SD car filled up. Right, so let's do it. So, what have we got on the list? Um, body tailgate screen, boot trim, which I can sort out today. That's just a day job. Uh, paint black bits I can't do, it's just too chilly, too much moisture in the end. Uh, boot trim, boots, floor, grommets I can do today. Uh, washer's not working, I can do today. <laughs> Fuel uh, filter I can do today. Fuel pressure, fuel return line I can do today. Um, I might not want to do interior. I could do oil levels I can do today. So There's quite a bit I could do today, apart from painting. There you go. I don't know what the point of that exercise was, Richard. Um, and shins. Engine shins down one size. Tap it. Shims. Right, so I had a 30 thou shim in there. I've taken it out, put a 15 thou shim in. Um, I've checked my measurements. 30 thou was right at the absolute extreme of the tolerances. Um, so I put 15 in, we'll see what happens. It can't be any worse than it was originally. I'm uh, running a bit on choke at the moment. I've changed the fuel filter, which was, for want of a better word, gopping. <laughs> I don't know when it was last changed. Um, so yeah, it's got a new fuel filter in it. Just about running off choke. It's cold. Seems happy enough again, doesn't it? Oh, we've been here before a couple of times. I 
I just want to hear if that tick comes back. I'm also checking for the fuel leak as well. And I've been doing the boot area. I found a hole down here right next to the fuel filler. It's a non-structural area. So I'm going to kind of make it good for now. Um, and it'll be on the next list of things I need to do on this car. Um, pop revisit the boot floor back in again with the seal. Oh, oh, oh. It is back in place. Um, I still need to do the tool roll. I was just looking at the letters actually thinking I could do those, couldn't I? Um, what else have we got on the list? Uh, fuel pressure. I've not done fuel pressure yet. Fuel filter. Windscreen wash is not working. Done one door trim. <laughs> Alright, one door trim done. This one I can't do until I've done the um, top handle. Because the captive nut is disappeared. I'm just giving me a nut and bolt so I need to put my hand up the inside of the door. To, um, to, to do that, sorry, distracted them for a second. Ticking over quite happily, isn't it? No fuel leak here, is there? No, that's all bone dry. Choke is in. And completely closed. Because obviously I've had all this apart. So I've checked the cable. It's still in the right sort of place. steering wheel covers off because I had to align the steering wheel yesterday. A little bit lean still. Then it's cold, so let me warm it through. I might have to turn the carbs up a quarter or a half a turn. But we'll wait till it's warm before we start messing around doing that. Get my hand right under here now. Let's get to the end of the throttle. <laughs> Not a misfire there. Very slight misfire just off idle. So one of the HT leads probably just needs looking at. Not really a problem. The ticket's not come back anyway, which is good news. Yeah, very, very slight misfire just developed. Only just as I'm coming off idle. Just coming off idle as a misfire. So rather than wasting fuel, I'll just go around and check all the HT leads because obviously it's all been apart and together and to apart and together and apart and together and apart and together. So I just need to make sure everything is kind of still. Um, where it should be. Before I went any further with uh, Diana's uh, fuel leak situation, so I know it's not the carburetor uh, because I've tried two different float valves, I've tried two different floats, um, I've confirmed that all of the details as I've already said, carburetor is fine. Um, and then the only other issue here we've got possibly is the return feed or the fuel pressure. So there we are, nice little pressure gauge. T-piece uh, with a couple of hose tail 8mm um, kind of connectors on it and the um, I think the gauge is a 1 8th MPT. So ignition's on, connect the battery, 
Put it on. Oops, hello. Connect the battery. Right, so the pump is putting out 4 psi, which is bang on. It's absolutely spot on. I won't leave this in place. I mean, literally, just I'll, I'll just undo that clip and then push it back onto there again. Um, so we're getting 4 psi out of the pump, which is good. Spot on. Um, which leads me then to the only kind of real um, explanation I've got for the fuel leak was the return hose. Um, so I'm going to have to replace that, really, I think. I just don't trust it. There's something blocked in it, or there's something kinked on it, or there's something happened to it. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll replace that. But at least now, I know the pump is good. And I know everything else is good. How about that? Apart from the return line. So let's just disconnect that. I'll take the, the pump off. And then what I'm going to do, I think, on Diana, I need to put the letters back on. Uh, I've got the bonnet mirrors here which I just rattle canned the stems just to tidy them up. They can go back on. And then I'm gonna put the letters um, back on, finish the trim in the boots. Um, and it needs a darned good clean, really. A darned good clean. Right, let's have the ignition off. Oh my goodness. It's cold today. <laughs> It was like 18 degrees. I know 18 degrees, what are you fucking talking about, Richard? It was eight or eight to 10 degrees um, uh, over the last couple of days or so. And now we're down to uh, sub five degrees again. This is Celsius. I mean, we're not talking proper hardcore cold, but we're talking. <sighs> Autumn is on its way through and winter is almost upon us. Oh, great. <laughs> Have to work faster. Right, let's get this thing. I want to get this project so it's done, so I can I can get my dad either to come up and pick it up, or I can um, go down. We'll sort something out between us. Use my trusty template to put the letters back on to the back of the car. Now the tailgate here did have some holes drilled in, some filled, some were still there. Uh, so I've used a brand new set of letters with the posts on them, which came from Powerful UK. Um, link below um, and yeah I'm quite pleased with that template can come off now oh yes and I stuck the original Land Rover badge back down there again and that's I think it's gonna be the back end for now done uh, tool rolled in weather's definitely gone a bit autumnal We'd like to discuss the weather in England, Shara, I tell you. We love it. Right, that's that. Oops, tore me template. Fuck it. <laughs> that's working one-handed there. Oh, it's got stuck somehow. The letter's got stuck underneath it. There you go. There's the, there's the balls up today. Oh, idiot. I'll stick that back on again in a second. That's not a problem anyway. But yeah, they come up all right, haven't they? A bit of tape under there as well. I'll go around and tidy it all up. Um, geez, a bit on the low side, isn't it? Maybe the end's a funny angle. Maybe it's just me. I'll put my glasses on. What do you guys reckon? I think that's quite smart. Looks the business and the tailgate closes. Oh yes, starting to look like a Range Rover again. Right, do these uh, the front letters. So I've done the range. Now I'm going to do the low there. Um, so again, these are the letters that came from Powerful UK. It's my own template that I made up. <coughs> um, when you're doing the front, the bonnet um, uh, letters, you've got to be aware that you've kind of got two curves. You've got a curve like this, and you've got a curve like that. Um, and in order for them to look right, the spacing is all completely different on them. So this template I took from this very car before I uh, painted it. So the letters are going on in exactly the same place from whence they came. Um, and really it's a case of oh, fuck's sake, Richard. It's a case of you make any 
your noise. Pretty. It's a case of getting the letter, two plugs on the back, lining it up in the hole, making sure you're happy with it. Um, now, what I've been doing is using a centre punch, lining it up so I'm comfortable with it and that it's going to sit in the hole and then centre punching underneath one of the pegs. Double checking that it's where I want it to be. Uh, I'm not drilling the holes out and putting the inserts in. Um, I'm drilling these holes, these are two and a half mil, these holes. So I'm drilling the holes out to two and a half mil, very bloody carefully. Ideally, I would have done this before painting, but I ran out of time. Then what we'll do is we'll put the peg in the hole. Again, we're going to line up, make sure that we are absolutely happy, and then we're going to centre punch the top hole, which I think is going to be there. punched it, we'll double check. The reason I'm using the punch, it gives the, the drill a guide, um, but also if I punch it in the wrong place, I can re-punch it um, and drill. I'm happy with that one. Let's drill that hole. On these are too long by well, about three mil so I'm literally just using a pair of uh, snips chopping the bastards a little bit shorter and then a bit of copperese which is going to do two things it's going to protect against corrosion in the hole because obviously it's got no paint in it and also it's going to aid the slippage the slide as it goes in now, there's a problem with the O, and the problem with the O is regardless of whether it's new stock from Powerful UK or old stock from a car, the pegs are bigger. Pain in the arse. So I'll come back to O because I need to change the drill bit for that. It's going to be, and I shall uh, keep going until I get to the end. And obviously I've measured the centre point of the grill here. So I've measured it to the centre rib, put the centre point on, and that's where I'm working to. Oh my goodness. Well, I don't need a video anymore of this. I can put the music back on. It passed! Of course it passed. Yeah, nice clean sheet for Diana. My dad will be collecting it next week, so... That's another project out of the way. Well chuffed. Yes, a lot of hard work went in there. But, uh, I think you'll be delighted. Absolutely delighted. <laughs>